Okay, so we are looking at um, vitamins and hormones. So what they are, uh, the soft types and the types of hormones that um, are available, and then also examples of those um, vitamins. So essentially these are um, like organic uh, chemical compounds that are in minute um, concentration, especially in the sources where they are found. Much as they are very, very important chemical compounds, they are very in small quantities and there are different types of them where they are found in different um, mechanisms of production in order to facilitate uh, metabolism. Okay, so that's what they are. And then any sources of vitamins, we have mentioned that they are chemical constituents. As chemical constituents, they can be found from plants. Any other sources that you know of where we can obtain vitamins? Class? Hello? Yes, madam, we're able to get you. Yes, so yeah. any sources of vitamins? In animals, apart from plants. Apart from plants and animals, yes. Any other sources of vitamins? Sunlight. Vitamin D. From sunlight. Yeah. From 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 sunlight. Okay. Yes. Any other sources? Synthetic vitamin C from the pharmacy. Yeah. What was talking? Who we'll just said I had pharmacy? What about pharmacy? <laughs> I was vitamin C tablets from the pharmacy. Vitamin C tablets, so you buy. So are you yes. saying that's a source? Yes, madam. Even uh, fruits like oranges, they have uh, vitamin C. Okay, so that's from plants. Okay, so maybe we just didn't understand the question. Did you say sources of vitamins apart from plants and animals? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have we exhausted? Have we exhausted the sources? Yes. Okay, and then synthetic ones, like somebody mentioned about buying them in the pharmacy. <laughs> so I don't know whether you can say that's the source. Of, of vitamins, but uh, yeah, so they are natural, naturally sourced, they can be naturally found, and then those that are also synthesized in the lab, okay? For instance, vitamin C itself, there is a lot of synthesis of most of these uh, vitamins with having sourced them initially from, from nature, okay? So they can be synthesized okay, to optimize the, 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 the vitamin the source, okay? So, um, so as we, we were saying, these are uh, organic um, compounds. So when we say organic compounds, they have uh, oxygen and they have um, carbon, carbon and hydrogen, okay? And uh, they are vital nutrients which are required in the diet in small quantities. Sustain life. So, in small quantities, you'll find that in all the metabolic activities and other physiological activities that the body um, uh, undertakes, vitamins, these small quantities of minerals are very, very important. They cannot, they cannot be synthesized in the body. Not all of them actually can be synthesized in the body, while well, some can be synthesized in the body. Chemical vitamins vary from simple compounds to very complex ones. So that's um, about the, the definition of what um, these chemical compounds can be, okay? So there are different types of vitamins, those that, for, those that are 
fat soluble and those that are water soluble. So if you can give me some examples of fat soluble vitamins. Any examples of fat soluble vitamins? Vitamin A. It's B and C. Vitamin uh, E. Vitamin E. Uh, vitamin A, D, E. No, all the B vitamins are fat soluble vitamins like B1, B2, B6, B12. Okay. Vitamin B and C. Uh, fat soluble. Okay. Yes. So when we say fat uh, soluble, what are we talking about? Hmm? Those, those that are able to dissolve in fat. Those that are able to dissolve in fat. Okay, and what are fat? <clears throat> Hmm? So fat soluble um, vitamins dissolved in fat can be stored in your body. Okay, and then examples include most of the ones that you had mentioned, vitamin A, D, E, and and K. Okay, so if we look at uh, we go further to look at what vitamin A constitutes, these are found in the animal kingdom, okay, abundant in fish, uh, liver oils, and then also they are very sensitive, they um, decompose on exposure to light, okay, and then they occur in three main um, forms, alcohol-based, okay, like retinol, aldehyde-based, like hydroretinol, and then also <coughs> oh, uh, <coughs> carotene. Carotins, which are also uh, part of this type of uh, vitamin. Now, <clears throat> when we're talking about um, one of the uh, physicochemical properties of them being um, decomposes the exposure to light, and then you have a lot of uh, medicines, for instance, or even just food, um, which <clears throat> have vitamins which are put in, in, in that food in order to supplement the vitamin intake of people. How do you think the shelf life of that vitamin uh, gets prolonged? It's a question to you, especially like there are some uh, medicines, or even vitamins themselves. How is the shelf life prolonged? One of the um, physicochemical properties is that it is very sensitive to light. So how, do, how are they kept in shape for a long time in order for them to be viable or efficacious? That's a question to all of you. If you want to speak, please raise your hand. I'm waiting. Yes, uh, Henry, go ahead. Yes, madam. <clears throat> I think one of the ways that we can prolong their shelf life is uh, keeping them dry, in dry form. Keeping them in dry form? Yes, as in drying them, yeah, we can increase their shelf life. Okay, how? Ma? These are fat soluble um, vitamins. So when they're in dry form and they are in your food. Okay, that was just my try. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it's okay. Yes, it, it, it's a good try. But we are yeah. looking at uh, this this chemical property. Yes. Any uh, somebody else who participants raise their hand? Who is that? Henry. Oh, Henry already, uh, raised, uh, we already saw that. Who else has raised their hands? I can't even see any people who have raised their hands now. <coughs> uh, 
yes nicholas like, like i've said you have to store them away from exposure to light and also you have to see to it that maybe the container that you have used is not allowing the penetration of light into the materials that you have stored thank you okay okay thank you uh, slightly lower than room temperature okay okay that's a valuable contribution anyone else i've seen another obstacle so vitamins are also sensible they're also sensitive to air they usually oxidize so you have to keep the water to prevent oxidation okay so when we talk about um our foods that are fortified with vitamin a foods that are fortified with vitamin a for instance uh, sugar is fortified with vitamin a and some cereals so can can you make a comment on that can you make a comment on that class raise your hand if you want to speak Yes, raise your hand. Who wants to? What about the foods that are fortified with vitamin A? Any comments on that? Those are questions that we need to be interrogating. Anyone? Okay, that's uh, food for thought. We are going to come back to that. Um, okay, <laughs> so now we just uh, an example of a chemical uh, structure of vitamin A. Okay, so we have most of them, which um, the ones that are fatty, uh, are fat soluble. One of the things that you need to, to, to note is that they've got a long chain um, alkene and alkyne um, uh, chains, okay? And these are fat soluble because these are um, fatty in nature and most of them will be with uh, alkyne, alkene and alkyne um, um, hydrocarbon chains. So this shows that actually this will be very uh, fat uh, soluble. So this is something that you need uh, to take note. Uh, functions of vitamins that are essential for normal functioning of the body, epithelia and the retina, and then deficiency is indicated in, this is, these are the vitamin A, is indicated in uh, night blindness and uh, drying and cracking of the mucus uh, membrane, okay? So uh, what is important in this for us to know is uh, the importance of vitamin A in um, vitamins. So the next one that we looked at, we'll look at is vitamin D. There are two forms. I'm going a little bit faster because we need to do uh, two slides and we're not going to exhaust all the two hours. So vitamin D, <coughs> there are two forms of vitamin D. Calciferol, okay, uh, which is synthesized by the plant and then also um, uh, called vitamin D2. And then vitamin D3, Vitamin D, D3 also, which is uh, synthesized by mammals and including us as well, okay? So now when we look at vitamin D2, which is of our interest, this we don't synthesize and it is very, very important for, the, for many of the other um, metabolic and 
activities and also the formation of um, <clears throat> bones, for instance, nails, hair, and all those um, hard parts of the, of the body. So vitamin D3 is formed by the thermal radiation of the skin and the compounds comprised in this group um, are also uh, metabolized in that, in that way. So what is important for us to know, I think in this uh, slide, I have um, endeavored to just uh, give a brief on how uh, vitamin D is produced and how it is uh, generated by the sun's rays. We are talking about us having, getting vitamin D from the sun's rays, but at the end of the day, it is the activation of that activity or of the uh, chemical activity that gets to produce the vitamin D2 and the vitamin D3, which is then assimilated by the body in order for it to be, to, to work in the um, areas where it is needed. Okay, the function of vitamin D, it, it regulates the calcium and phosphorus balance in the body, okay, and then promotes calcium absorption and uh, calcium absorption, which is a uh, major bone formation. And then deficiency of this, then you get to have soft bones or leakage. And then um, also other symptoms that we show, maybe dry scaly hair, dry scaly skin, and then very soft nails and things like that. So this is the structure of vitamin D. Again, one of the uh, things that will let you see that it is actually fat soluble are these um, our, our, our fatty, the, the long chain of skins that are part of the um, of the structure. Okay, so that's about vitamin D, and this is a short um, just short description of how it is um, made with yes, uh, the kumbi. <clears throat> Madam, it was a mistake. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So it is important for us to know the vitamin D and the sun and uh, exactly how the sun comes in. It's not that we're getting the vitamin D from the sun. It activates the process in where the, the body will make and convert the, the vitamin D in the skin when the skin is exposed to the sun. So it is important, um, especially that you get some exposure to the sun because this kind of vitamin is manufactured or it's made or generated in the body. You cannot get it from from um, uh, from external uh, food or things that you get to ingest. So the body manufactures it with the help of the sun. So it is important that time and again you expose yourself to the sun in order for vitamin D to be uh, generated in the, in the body. Okay, so that's about vitamin D. And then vitamin D rich food. So these are the scalp foods that are going to get us to produce that vitamin D. Okay, oily food from salmon, eggs, butter, liver, and milk. <clears throat> the other vitamin which is of interest, uh, especially in natural product, is vitamin E. Uh, because it has a lot of, um, uh, most of the plants, especially um, those that have got flowers, very colorful flowers, have got quite a lot of vitamin E, and vitamin E is also part of the vitamins or minerals that uh, help in um, um, arresting uh, antioxidants. They, they've got antioxidant properties, okay? and most of the plants, when we're talking about plants or fruits or um, those that are flowery and those that are, are colored, we talk about their antioxidant properties. And these antioxidant properties help to reduce or to slow down the aging process, okay? And get all the vitals to work optimally of the, at the age at which somebody is. So there are some times when somebody can be young, but then they start, um, their organs work overwork and they work like as of an old person because of the oxidation that takes place in the body. And vitamin A and most of the other minerals are actually very helpful in arresting that process, okay? 
So again, this is a group of lipid soluble. So the functions of vitamin A is a concerted to fertility used in treatment of high blood pressure, cholesterol, angina, and the aging conditions, which we talked about uh, when um, antioxidation. The treatment of cloud cutting and phytoplastic breast uh, diseases, it acts as an antioxidant and prevents lipid peroxidation. So again, uh, when we look at the chain, the long uh, hydrocarbon chains there, they are actually showing us how they can be um, fat um, soluble. So that's the functions of vitamin uh, E. We go to vitamin K. This as well. Vitamin K is as well uh, uh, fat soluble, like um, Elia mentioned, and they are a family of two methyl one four naphthenones that occur naturally. So these you can actually find them in the food that we eat, and they are very, very important in the plant kingdom for synthesis. Okay. And then um, originally vitamin K2, they are in two types, K1 and K2, which can be um, which uh, can be obtained from decaying fishes or some bacteria some from the soil. So all these are actually like natural products that we can um, obtain from nature. Meaning that most of these are vitamins and essential um, natural products can be obtained from the food that we, we eat. From the food, um, Okay, uh, so that's about uh, vitamin K, vitamin K1 and K2. And then when we look at the functions, the necessary factor in blood clotting, okay, it acts indirectly by activating those substances which are necessary for the conversion of thrombin to thrombin. So this is a process that you need to be familiar with. Uh, and I'm sure in pharmacology we've done this a lot. And when you look at the uh, um, this process, this is an area of intervention when we get to use natural products for wound healing, for instance. Okay, in your thing, this is the process that the intestinal flora provides adequate supply. So again, vitamin K can actually be obtained from uh, the flora. Remember, bacteria also produce vitamin K. Okay, the food that we get. To eat. So the bacteria that is internalized that we have in our gut can also help to convert uh, these amines to vitamin K, and then they 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 they, they do the, the work that they need to do in metabolism. So the deficiency there is prolonged breathing, excess bruising, and then also associated with this atherosclerosis and cancer. So the food that we eat is very, very important because it gets to arrest some of this minute concentration as this may be, but they are very, very important. So that's about uh, fat soluble vitamins. We go to water soluble vitamins. So these are easily dissolved in water, okay? And because they're easily dissolved in water, then they are easily absorbed also, okay? So what this means is these vitamins are We've got a hand from Trisha here. Is it Trisha or who is the hand there? Hello? No, it was actually okay. like Madam. Okay. So uh, because they are water soluble, they while they, they dissolve easily, they are also easily excreted. They are also just passed through the body much as they are extremely important. So these, um, like um, some of you have mentioned, the B complexes are all are water soluble and vitamin C. So any vitamin C or B that your body doesn't use as it passes through your system is lost mostly when in, in, in the urine or in other means, your sweat and things like that. So you need a fresh supply of these vitamins every day. Okay, the reason why you are always going to have fruits all the time, vegetables all the time, so that you get vitamin C all the time and vitamin B complexes because they, they are never stored in the body. There's no storing mechanism 
unlike the, uh, the fat-soluble uh, vitamins, which get stored in the adipose uh, tissue all around the body where there's fat, they can be stored. But these that are water-soluble, they cannot be stored in the body, hence in, in, in need for continuous supply all the time. And the food that we get to, to eat gets to supply this a lot. Um, for instance, uh, we've got uh, the citrus fruits, but then again, we've got um, the chilies that have got so much vitamin C as compared to citrus fruits, even, and then the black, uh, the green, the red peppers, those have got a lot of vitamin C uh, compared to the citrus fruits that we eat. And then certain kinds of vegetables also have a lot of vitamin C. For natural products, you get a lot of vitamin C and B from natural products and the foods that we eat, okay? From tea also, you get some B uh, vitamins also. Those, so when you steep your tea, when you uh, brew your tea, you can get a bit of vitamin C from there, okay? So every day of uh, diet, we consume vitamin C from different um, sources and from different angles. Okay, so now um, vitamin C, if we just have a, a quick close up with vitamin C, it's an antioxidant essential for human nutrition, can be prepared synthetically or obtained by extracting from plant materials rich in this vitamin. The richest sources is the fruit from Seminalia, okay, and this is a, it's a food um, which is found in Australia, but you'll find it a lot in other uh, tropical regions of the world. And then the edible fruits contain this much of vitamin C, such that one fruit will give you so much vitamin C that the body needs. However, it cannot be stored because it is uh, soluble and it easily gets eliminated in the body. Also, uh, rose hips and then black currants are also endowed with vitamin C. I had mentioned about uh, uh, red papers and then um, green paper as well. It's got a lot of vitamin C that you can eat fruits and um, other vegetables. Other rich sources, we have um, just mentioned those tomatoes, but these um, they are better cooked tomatoes. <coughs> as opposed uh, to raw tomatoes, but again, the way you cook the tomatoes is also very, very important. If I may ask, what are the physical properties uh, that should safeguard us knowing how to use and obtain um, maximum vitamin C? Physical chemical properties of vitamin C? It's Hello, have you continued? Yes, we can. Okay, so, um, hello, can we continue? Okay, so other rich sources include uh, citrus fruits, green papers, or uh, different kinds of papers, red papers there, and then um, the kiwi fruits, okay, strawberries, tomatoes, broccoli, and some uh, potatoes. Okay, so what are the functions? So what are the functions of vitamin C? Okay. 
Uh, vitamin C is essential for normal functioning of living cells involved in many enzymatic um, reactions. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes we can. So it maintains yes, a healthy um, immune system, it is required for the development of cartilage, and then required for normal growth and maintenance. Okay. It aids in the absorption of iron in the intestines. Okay. So now, especially this, the aiding of absorption of iron in the intestine, this is an area of interest. How does it do that? When you are intervening with uh, iron, um, uh, like iron deficiency, and then how is vitamin C, how does it help in absor absorption of, um, of, I of iron into the intestine, okay? One thing that we need to know is that iron is in different forms, okay? The iron that we obtain most of the times from animal, animal food that we eat, uh, the iron that we obtain from animals is easily absorbed. It is in a form which the body easily absorbs it. But iron that we obtain from vegetables, from plants, is in a form that is not easily absorbed. So if somebody has got iron deficiency, if they are not getting it from the meat products that they are eating, and then they want to get it from the plant products that they are eating, they have to add on to, they have to add on vitamin C or something that will aid to change that ion, which can either be ferrous or ferric state to be easily absorbed. So you actually absorb maximum ion from animal products that we get to eat, and that is the one that is easily absorbed. The one that is from plants, yes, we, a lot of studies have been done about these uh, plants, vegetables, even just nutrition wise, most of the food and uh, the uh, natural products in terms of plants have got a lot of iron. But you'll be surprised that much as that iron is a lot in those plants, it is not easily available or the body does not easily access it even when we consume those products. So it is important to for other chemical compounds, which can have an added effect, synergistic effect in order to maximize the absorption of that ion. So that is what is important about this. And that, and what is important when you are doing uh, some natural product, a survey of uh, maybe the iron content of something, you also have to go a step further in knowing what type of ion are we talking about because Yes, there can be some iron, it can be rich in iron, but is that iron is it available to the body for use in order for it to function normally? Is it available for enzymatic activities? Is it available for maintenance and growth of normal cells, for instance, or tissue development? So that is uh, an important aspect to, to note when we are looking at natural products. Yes, on paper or yes, outside your body will have this uh, natural product, plants which will have a lot of iron. For instance, beetroot. And some studies have been done where um, we have assessed the amount of iron in the plants that we, we, we look at. For instance, uh, beetroot, there may be amaranthus, and there may be avocado, to say the amount of iron that is there. They have quite some amount of iron that can be artificial in the body, but not all that iron that is in the body is easily absorbed. So vitamin C comes in very, very handy for that because it makes that iron absorbable by the body for maximum use. Okay. All right. Are we having, okay. Um, so deficiency of iron that, uh, Acid. That's ascorbic acid deficiency, uh, scurvy, which uh, causes uh, muscular weakness, osteoporosis, loss of teeth, tiredness, reduced uh, resistance to infection, easy bruising, bronchitis, dry hair, and then um, anemia and nose, easy uh, nose bleed. Okay, so that's uh, the structure and that's for your information and knowledge of ascorbic acids. And then we go to the uh, B complexes, okay?
Okay, this consists of eight soluble vitamins, and there we have them. Uh, these are more than eight. Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Okay. Okay, so we have eight of, of, of those, and these are found in different uh, parts of the metabolic activity, different class of enzymes, and then also in neurological, um, physiological um, activities. These are very, very essential. Okay, so the functions are they work synergistically again to boost metabolism, enhance the immune system, and then keep skin and muscle healthy, encourage cell growth and cell division. Here we have uh, some chemical structures of uh, the B um, complex. The B complex are vitamins. So if you look at this structure, it is very, very diverse. So it is actually difficult to place where what is. And with this diversity comes with the diverse even in its function. Okay, it comes with the diverse even in its function. Okay, so. Um, so for vitamins, you cannot tell that this is vitamin D, this is vitamin D, and these are just the common names. But if you, if you, if you have to look at the name of this, looking at the chemical name of it, it is extremely lengthy. Okay. So we have the folic acid as well, vitamin D C, which is of interest to us. Okay, which is referred to. Which, which is isolated uh, from uh, spinach and many other um, vegetables as well. So this vitamin um, is necessary for cell division and it enables formation of hemoglobin production and red blood cells. So you will find that there are people who are um, um, anemic or they have challenges with uh, um, the normal um, red blood cell or red count you find that they'll be given iron and then folic acid and vitamin C. So these three uh, chemical constants actually work synergistically in order for uh, they to, to have healthy immobility, okay? Supplements have been required in pregnancy. So um, because of the demand for, for, for blood and the demand for this uh, folic acid and the demand for uh, red blood cells and uh, all this metabolism to be, Optimum. Okay, this far and the sources of uh, folic acid again, uh, green leafy vegetables, nuts, whole grains, legumes, supplements may be required. Lack of this vitamin causes diarrhea, loss of weight, and mega, megaloblastic anemia. Okay, so there are different kinds of anemia depending on what. Uh, mineral or chemical compound is lacking in the in the body and like i said there's a lot of energism where a lot of these uh, minute minerals have need the support of other minerals in order for them to function optimally okay so they, this is the structure of folic acid and then um pyridoxin which also exists in three forms, pyridoxal, pyridoxal, and pyridoxamine. And these are, can be obtained either from animals or they can be obtained from um, plant sources, or they can actually be synthesized in the, in the lab. So we've got synthetic forms that can be synthesized, but um, obviously there are enough, the, 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 the natural source is actually sufficient for the animals and for the, for the human beings to partake of this kind of vitamin. Okay, what are the functions of B6? It helps the body to absorb and metabolize amino acids. And then when we talk about amino acids, we're talking about healthy uh, proteins and healthy um, uh, body. Uh, it also helps the use of fat and then also in the formation of red blood cells. Mm. Are we? Lawrence, yes. Mm. Um, Adam, I want to I want to ask on the the functionality of uh, vitamin B six to prevent um 
the referral neuropathy that comes as a result of isoniazide. Um, can it also prevent just the other general um, neuropath neuropathic uh, conditions other than that which is induced by isoniazide? Uh, yes, depend if, if it's not uh, by physical injury. There are some times when uh, a neuropathy can be as a result of some physical injury, some suppression of some sort of, of, of the nerves. Maybe there's something that is pressing on the nerves and something like that, and then it causes uh, neuropathy, especially in the extreme ones. So if that is uh, as a result of just um, chemical compound imbalances, then it can be able to to, to remedy this. But it, if it's physical, then uh, surgery is what works. I hope that helps. Okay, madam. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So um, that's about uh, vitamin B6, which is very, very essential for. Um, for, the, the, uh, for um, healthy nerves and then also um, healthy blood and then um, just metabolic activity. All right, so let's go to vitamin B7, biotin. This is needed for the metabolism of uh, carbohydrates. So if you have noticed, minute as they may be in the body, they are everywhere in metabolic activities, which is very, very essential. And you don't need tons and tons of this in the body, just small, small amounts of the body, in the body, it does wonders because they keep metabolism moving, okay? So vitamin biotin is uh, needed for metabolism of uh, metabolizing carbohydrates, fat and amino acids, and then often recommended for strengthening of hair and then nails as well, you will find that some products will talk about biotin. But I'll tell you that a lot of these things have to come from the inside because that's where metabolism is taking place. Because if I start putting biotin on top of the nail, this is already hard dead tissue. What is going to happen to it? So usually a lot of these things have to come from the metabolic activity that takes place in our bodies, and they are not a big thing. So natural uh, food sources include houses, nuts, fish, and in other foods as well, vegetables, green vegetables, and also a lot of yellow and um, orange foods. Okay. Uh, a vitamin can be manufactured in the body with the aid of other vitamin B um, you know, vitamins, uh, the synergism that we talked about, okay? Deficiency of this is associated with pelagra, skin inflammation, diarrhea, and delirium. So you find that your immune system is weak, and because of, of that, you have some weakness in the body, and then uh, your digestive system is not strong enough in order to, um, because it's not strong enough, absorption is not taking place, and you have a lot of diarrhea, skin inflammation, because now you don't have anything that is strengthening the extremities of the of the body. So we go to vitamin B12, cyanocolabalamine. So this uh, does not occur in plants, okay? But it is obtained from animal products, okay? We need the liver, kidneys, milk, and eggs. So this vitamin is involved with the metabolism of amino acids, okay? So the protein uh, building, building up protein, particularly the methylation of homocysteine to give methionine and breakdown of other amino acids. So of importance there, what is the role of methionine in the metabolic activity? So this is uh, very, very important. When we look at um, the shikinic acid pathway, when we go back to um, stage stuff, most of the essential amino acids, okay, have got, um, the essential amino acids have got some of these as um, precursors, okay? The vitamin B, uh, vitamin B12 um, precursors, okay? We have, 
learned or been told here that plants do not actually um, generate vitamin B12, but it is generated in the animal. So the animals will get the kefirs to produce vitamin B12 from the plant kingdom, and these are the ones that uh, with the shipanic acid pathway, most of those are, the, are obtained at the kefirs as food compounds or as transitional compounds, okay? One of which is methionine. They assist in the formation of red blood cells. Vitamin B12 is used for the treatment of pernicious anemia. So it is important for us to know what pernicious anemia is and then megaloblastic um, anemia is and all the types of um, blood deficiencies, okay? And how these um, minute minerals come in to boost the formation of these um, red blood cells and um, other blood components. Okay, and then we have vitamin B1 thiamine. This is a sulfur containing hydrochloride available from plant sources, both plant and animal sources. Okay, so in here, whether be it you're consuming animal uh, food or plant food, you're going to have enough of this uh, vitamin, okay? It is, however, heat and light sensitive, hence exposure to these energies should be avoided. Okay, it assists in carbohydrate metabolism in the body, also assists in normal functioning of the nervous system. Severe deficiencies cause very, very loss of appetite, muscular atrophy, and mental disturbances. Okay. So in on a normal day, you will find that all the food that we are consuming, especially for these that are water soluble, should contain all these in the smallest uh, concentration because your metabolism, metabolism has to be upbeat. So we go to natural sources of nutrients other than the plant uh, sources, those are natural sources of course, but then we got other that you cannot harness really, uh, like the cod liver oil. We get um, a lot of um, minerals from there, and it's a very, very uh, healthy kind of fat that is obtained from the, um, excuse me, from the from the fish, the cod. Madam, I got a question. Yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to find out more about <laughs> vitamin B12. So, what about the vegetarian? Come again? I didn't get it. Oh, I'm talking about vitamin B12. Yes. Yeah, you, see, you say, it, yeah, we say it plant does not synthesize this vitamin. Now, I was asking, what about the vegetarians? People who doesn't eat meat and the like, how do they survive? Is it that it's not important? Yeah, the people who don't eat, who, who don't eat. No, 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 not that it's not important. It is very, very important. The thing is about uh, most of these vitamins, remember the synergism that we talked about, most of these vitamins will be able, will be formed with the help of other vitamins. In the same way, when we look at vitamin B12, it is obtained from the meat. So meat, you obtain vitamin B12 uh, you, you obtain it from meat or liver as vitamin B12. But when you get uh, precursors, for instance, from plants, your body, you are an animal, uh, sorry to say, a human being, yeah? And we're in that category, okay, of mammals. We are able to make our own vitamin B12, okay? For as long as all the other elements are there and some of them we need to get them from the plants. There are those vitamins which are, say, you, uh, I'm sure you know about essential vitamins and those that are managed essential, right? Can you mention one essential vitamin? And what does it mean when you say essential vitamin and non essential vitamin? Hello, who asked the question? Uh, 
Hello, it's me, madam. Hello. Yeah. Yes. What is what is an essential vitamin? Let's categorize essential. the vitamin. Essential and non-essential vitamin. When we say essential and non, what do we talk about? What do we mean? Essential. Non-essential are those uh, vitamins which can be, which our bodies can't, which can't synthesize yet. Which our bodies can synthesize, okay? And vitamin B12 is one of them. So essential amino acids are those that animals cannot synthesize in the body. So they have to get them as they are, the, the whole vitamin. And it, that's why it becomes an essential vitamin. Okay, so B12 is not synthesized by plants, but synthesized by animals. And our bodies are able to synthesize it for as long as precursors are obtained in our diet. Okay, so that, right, that, that's thank you. How, okay, yeah. So, uh, vitamin B1, which is uh, we're talking about how it is sensitive, it also assists in the normal functioning of the nervous. A system we talk about what it is okay we, we, we've gone the code okay we're talking about the cod uh, liver oil which is um very important in uh, therapeutic it has a lot of therapeutic uh, properties and it has been um, isolated from the cod and then uh, i just give a brief um explanation of how it is isolated okay with this <coughs> It relieves, uh, um, helps relieve joint stiffness and then um, also elevates symptoms of arthritis, helps prevent trauma, artery uh, disease, helps repair wounds, may help uh, promote cognitive performance. So when you look at these um, therapeutic properties that it has, what would you reckon is the, is, 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 is the most abundant of the chemical compounds that we talked about in this cod liver oil? Mm -hmm. When we look at uh, its function, its uses, and the, the therapeutic properties. So, from here, we are seeing that it is the best source for omega 3 fatty acids. Fatty acids, these are fat soluble. Uh, we can talk about it being a fat, uh, high content of fat soluble vitamins. Okay, so these can be many of them, depending on the quality of this cod liver oil. It's a natural product which has all these. You don't have to get the, the vitamins one by one. So, as the oil itself, it has all these in good concentration, concentration that the body can actually utilize, you utilize at the same time. Okay. So these are some of the natural um, sources of these important vitamins. So you will find that um, some people who are so much fanatics of these natural products, they will be taking maybe half a teaspoon of cod liver oil all the time, which sometimes can be dangerous because these are not supposed to be ingested just as they are, okay? But they're supposed to be part of the, of, of the food that you get to, 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 to consume. Okay, uh, and then, yes, I gave a, a short narration of how you uh, collect and extract uh, cod liver oil. Uh, okay, so you can uh, read that, and it's, it's very important um, for you to know how to do that. So when we look at the physiological um, appearances of this and the, um, concentration of what it has, okay? It has 15% saturated acid, 85% unsaturated acid, and then large amounts of vitamin A and vitamin D precursors. When we say vitamin D, remember that we're talking about precursors, okay? The ones that are, are going to be used to get the vitamin D when it's activated by the UV light. Okay, um, and then the last one that we're going to look at is uh, ubiquinone, uh, coenzyme Q10, which is also a 
fat soluble nutrients produced naturally in our body. Okay, it's found in every cell and then concentrated in organs that require the most energy, such as the heart, <clears throat> we've got the liver, muscles, and kidneys. So these are organs with a lot of work. They are they work 24 7. Okay. And then the mitochondrial plants and animals, this coenzyme is involved in electron transportation. It may act as a free radical scavenger and function as an antioxidant and membrane stabilizer. Remember, one of the other antioxidants that we talked about is the vitamin C, okay, as an antioxidant and a lot of fat soluble um, vitamins. Okay, um, so we go to another source of uh, uh, vitamins, which is dried yeast, and this is the natural product as well, okay? Baker's yeast, okay? It's important uh, yeast with a lot of B complex, okay? So now what is important about uh, these vitamins that you get from the yeast is, um, we know what yeast is used for, okay? And we, I'm sure all of us eat bread. Uh, those that are not uh, um, sensitive to wheat, to gluten, those that are not, um, uh, uh, all of, I, I suppose most of us are wheat tolerant and it's, it's bad for those that are not. But bread is also, so a source of certain kinds of vitamins depending on the way they, 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 they use this yeast because in baker's yeast there is a lot of vitamins that we can eat. So other than it being a carbohydrate, it is also a source of uh, most of the vitamins that are required. So my interest here is in the those that are one heat uh, resistant, heat sensitive or light sensitive, for instance. If we talk about um folic acid running out of time no. when we talk about folic acid for instance how much of this um chemical compound do you reckon remains in the bread that we eat class folic acid what kind of vitamin is uh, folic acid Okay, Madam, so that's uh, yes. yes. I was trying to say this. Uh, raise up your, yes, raise up your hand, Henry. The, it is one of the essential vitamins. Uh -huh. So now with its physical chemical properties, how what how do you reckon it remains in the bread if, it, if we still have bread with folic acid? Or pastries or whatever we, we have um, that uses yeast. Other than the bread and the pastries and confectionaries, what is it, well, where is Becker's yeast used? Hmm? I wouldn't want to excite people here. You'll find a lot of this again in the beers. Beer has got some forms of vitamins that are actually uh, quite healthy, okay? But again, um, never mind the alcohol, but then most of them they'll have that are 